Right, today's video we're going to be looking at gear that we've been working on during the lockdown this week. Um, we're also going to be looking at a few tips and tricks which help you out in your fishing endeavours. And at the end of this video I will put a bit of boat footage up from last year. I'll also put timestamps below so if you want to skip forward you can. Uh, but before you go there is a charity event taking place on the 10th of April for Olight Torches. This is Olight, it's an awesome torch. The charity event involves all sales from Olight on the 10th of April will be donated to the NHS. Now, obviously the NHS is out there at the moment trying to save people's lives and, you know, some of them are losing their own lives over it. So, uh, you know, if you need a torch or you just want to help out the NHS, Get yourself a torch. Like I say, on the 10th of April, all proceeds will be given to the NHS to help against the fight against this virus. Can you think of a more worthy cause? Anyway, let's get on with the video. Right. I need to take that off of there and put it on there. And it's not going to be as easy as it looks because it, I've got to take the whole big steel frame off underneath not just this bit which is a pain so I brought the big guns out big torque wrench to try and get these nuts undone because they're going to be as rusty as anything let's have a quick look there's a plane seems to be plenty of planes you can see up there there's the steel which goes to this bar here and that goes all the way along to here and the same the other side the only problem with the other side is going to be that the exhaust is right in the way so yeah sometimes I'm sure that was going to be 17 might because it's just rusty and it's going to be awkward because these nuts are going to be too long oh dear that means spanners that makes life even worse okay there is some up under here as well there we go Ooh. Yep. well I just ripped the back of the car out <laughs> Now this comes all apart. There's actually the bolts are actually down in there. Look, there's a couple of bolts, and that is the two bolts that are giving me grief. So that's good news. Um, now, to make things life easier, just got a bolt. You see there. Put it through a socket because I don't have an attachment that will go into a little drill like this. Made it like that, and that goes onto there, like that. And now all I got to do. Stick that on there, lock off the nut from the other side, and away we go. But they've already been loosened, so this isn't obviously going to stop the drill because we've already loosened them. Right. Oh, and these cars come with a table. How cool is that? <laughs> the one other one I got as well has got a table. You can just hook it out. So you can either you can either use it as a workbench, or you could come back with lobster crab, and you could sit there at the top of the beach selling crab. If you wanted to. There you go, it's off. This thing weighs a ton. That's one serious toe setup. Good nick. Light bit of rust on it. What I'll do is I'll brush that off, give it a quick spray over, and then put it back under, and then it'll have a coat of wax all in that. But this thing here, this actually attaches to the tow ring of the car, so even if this actually broke, you'd still be on the tow ring there. Not that it would, because like I say, this thing is some, this is a bit of serious kit. When you look at, hold on, when you look at that, that there's another tow itch from another vehicle. There's a bit of a difference there, I'd say. <laughs> that little thing versus this thing. But yeah, this is some thick steel as well. Well, at least it's off. Like I say, I'll get it sprayed up tonight and then refit it tomorrow. And then when it's underneath, 
when it's all done I'll wax oil like underneath the car and I'll get right up over this and cover this as well be good for another well I'll outlive the car put it that way so there we go it's on day two took a bit of a while you got because the thing is it's not just about putting this on you've got to get past the exhaust where the bolts go and getting it up underneath this plastic as well right pain in the ass but we got there in the end and basically this is bolted on this side bolted on this side to the chassis of the car and then this here the center part of this bar which goes under there is bolted to there's a tow ring like on the car and there's a bolt goes through that which clamps this to that as well so it's bolted in three different areas or places and uh, it'll be for the like I say it's just for the dinghy up and down the beach really I don't tend to tow the boat I get a friend normally with a tractor in that or a bigger vehicle to tow the boat although I will take it across the road and drop it down when it's back down there but when we go on the road we'll because we put it on a much bigger trailer um, obviously we use much bigger towing equipment but um, I haven't got the electric, I'm deciding whether to bother with that or not because I don't really tow at night and um, if I ever have brought the dinghy back, I mean even if I did go at night I could, I could wire up, I've got a socket in here, I could just wire up some rear lights. The reason being is my lights, as you'll see, are all up here. So my trailer doesn't obscure any of my lights or my indicators and that, but I would still put a set of, you know, just the uh, parkers or whatever, or red lights on the back, and they could go through, they could go through to a, there's like a um, outlet there, I could wire, put a socket on there just for the trailer board, but like I say, I don't tend to trail at night, I've probably trailed at night twice, I think, ever, so, it's just taken, I'd, I'd have to, like I say, possibly take that one off or go and get a new one and then wiring it through to all these you gotta take all these off to get onto them or wire clips and when you start messing around with that you never know how you're gonna upset your lights and stuff so I'd rather not bother to be honest just for the dinghy if I was towing boats regularly well it would be a must but like I say this car's just really used for going up and down the beach that's why it's an old car don't want nothing too good you don't want a brand new car you're gonna rot on the beach because they will rot or they will get rusty So I'm just going to be running over some pots today, a couple here from around the back. I'm just um, checking the ropes and things, checking all the joints, any ropes, the net. There's just half a dozen around the back that I didn't, they were in such good nick I didn't bother doing them last year. I say such good nick, I mean I'll just find any small flaws in them and get it before, you know, I don't want to have to start fixing things out in the boat if I can help it. So. Just go over all the gear, make sure it's all good, and then we can get these down when we can get our boat in the water. Now, when you do your ropes, and you wrap them around, you can either use a bit of insulation tape, wrap it around like that, and then you just cut it where the insulation tape is, or you can melt the end. Melting the end's a bit more fiddly, it's easier just to wrap a bit of tape around, and then like I say, you can cut in the middle of the tape, so it's always sealed like that, and it'll make your life a lot easier pushing it through the net. I'm going to show you a trick. Now you're all going to think I'm mad here, but it does work. It's an old fisherman showed me this. So you've got a knot like that. It's been tied up for a while. Can't undo it, right? So what you do is... I'll have to go down because it's on the thingy here. You go... Put your mouth around it and blow. Sounds stupid, I know. But I guarantee you it works.
Why does it work? I have no idea. Um, the only thing I can think of is the air pressure pushes the knot apart a little bit, which is enough to free it. But I've used it many times in the past, and it won't get all the knots, but I'd say 90 odd percent of them, they'll undo. Ones that I just couldn't get undone, you just give them a good hard blow on the rope, as long as the rope's not too big, obviously. Um, for whatever reason, it works. I always remember an old fisherman, he said to me one day, I was trying to get this knot, he said, I says, you, you won't get that. And I wasn't getting it. He said, blow on it. I said, what do you mean, blow on it? And he said, put your mouth around it and blow on it. So I did. And lo and behold, the knot came undone. So there you go. But uh, yeah, don't take my word for it. Just try it if you ever get a knot that's completely jammed tight. Now this thread, I could put it on a netting needle, but uh, to be honest, I, uh, I'll be finished before I actually loaded the, need the uh, netting needle. Plus, netting needle is only really for making nets, so. Just when you're trying to get the right sizes and stuff, and keep the thread going. Just reinforcing the base of this pot. Some of the knots are a bit worn. It's double lined, but um, it took a bit of a beating last year in some of the weather, so. I don't normally use this green net on the base, but I did on these occasions because I didn't have any other net. So, more tips and tricks. When you do pots and you're doing a truce of, say, two, I always have a couple of weights either side, like that, and then the end that you're going to pull the pot up, put another weight there, and that'll take where the rope is attached to it, that will take the shock out of it a little bit in tide and waves and that kind of thing if you get rough weather. You don't need to do it on the second pot, the one that's not attached to the surface cable, but just for that one. It's like your anchor pot. Right, I thought I'd show you another quick tip, being we're doing a few tips today. Um, this is a bearing off your, uh, bearing the bearings in there, this is a hub off your trailers for dinghies most likely. There is a bigger one, but it might be the same size, not sure. But yeah, on your trailer for dinghies to take on the road, that kind of thing. Now there's normally a, a, a bearing cover here to stop all the grease so you don't see the bearings and that. If you lose that, it doesn't take much. If they hit something, they can get knocked out. If you lose that, which happens, it's happened a lot to me over the years. Um, peanut butter lid. Now this comes from, I, I don't know if it's Tesco or Waitrose, one of those. You'd have to ch double check. But if you're looking for one that fits perfectly, you just put it on like that. Done. Now you can put a little bit of silicon just to make sure it doesn't come off, but that makes a great substitute. In fact, I've been using it on my dinghies for the last couple of years. I actually bought about four peanut butter a couple of years back just for the lids, just so I got some spares. <laughs> and it's, it's proved to be useful. They normally, I mean, I've had them on for two years. I had one that was broken, but I think somebody kicked it. So yeah, there you go. That'll stop all the grease, all the water getting in and sand and all the rest of it. And while we're on the subject of tips and tricks, let me find another one. Right, when you carry your rods, you carry your rods like this. Always a big pain in the ass keeping the rods together, yeah? Um, some people use elastic bands. The trouble with elastic bands is they rot in sunlight. So within a couple of days, the elastic band's pretty useless. So what you want is this. This is bicycle inner tube. Get yourself an old one or just go and buy a new one, it doesn't really matter. And you cut it up into bands like this. So it's like rubber bands. And these things last for years, they don't rot so easy. So all you do is you have one on the rod. And most rods, not all rods, but most rods, depending on the size, obviously beach casters are good. And depends on your tube as well. But they basically stay on the bottom. They'll fit on and you can just pull them up like that stick your rod in like that and you can carry it like that and you can just leave those on the rod you'll barely notice them as well being they're black and yeah I just carry one of these on the base of all my rods unless the rod is a bit thin but beach casters that kind of thing they fit beautifully on and just helps you to carry your rod around them you can put the actual rod through the eye on some rods as well so just another tip they also make great float stops again I found elastic band, when you use an elastic band as a float stop, it can slide. But if you cut a little strip of this off, it doesn't slide so easy as an elastic band because of the stretch isn't so, it's not so stretchy. So they work brilliantly for float stops as well. Even if you just carry 
one in your bag or if you've got one on your rod and you don't have any float stops and you went and go float fishing you can just cut a bit off the uh, one on your rod so there you go another little tip I may have shown this tip before <coughs> can't remember but when you're lining reels just get yourself a bamboo stick I don't know if you see that up there and hang it up like that then you can put your spools on now obviously I've got a crab pot line on there as well and you can reel line straight on and you don't have to worry too much about overrun if you put several spools on they're like just like brakes like your just like your reel or how it works on a multiplier reel <clears throat> now just put a bit of drag on the side and they'll stop overruns unless you're going absolutely crazy and stop dead it might overrun a little bit then but um no i've been using this for years easiest quickest way of spooling up your reel you'll just need to obviously hold the line with a glove or something depending on how much tension you want and another tip if you have fishing rods like what i have like which is they don't i mean most rods have a, a foam at the base but some of the beach casters like the ones i got they're like most like blanks they don't have any of this even if they have this it doesn't matter you know when you're fishing and you put your rod down in the rocks if you're rock fishing and you always get damaged to this now you can buy protectors there is people come up with all these weird protectors and that but you don't need anything more than a roll of that a bit of electrical tape just wrap it around the base of your rod around like that and it will just protect your rod in the rocks and it's been proven and tested because I've got a rod which I've had for over 20 odd years a beach caster I still use it it's a full carry and the base is a blank and it's wrapped with a bit of this, a couple of layers of that and while well, it's still alive to this day I still use it so and that rod's been used a lot they are in here. so this is our old ropes the ones we were using last year, the year before, the year before that, probably the year before that um, need time to get them out and see what's what now I've got some new ones, I always buy a few new ropes each year or a couple of lengths for a couple of sets and that way it just keeps new rope coming and as they get older I will take this rope and use it to rope the pots up so it gets a double use out of it now the question is when I start off I'm going to start off with the dinghy putting pots out in the dinghy this year you'll have to excuse the mower again not much I can do about it at the moment yeah um so I'm going to probably put short ropes on to start with because if I'm in the dinghy I'm only going to be in the bay potting for now until I get my get the main boat down and I don't know when that's going to go in um, I mean I've got to get it to the water first and that might be a bit of a problem at the moment with all what's going on so we'll see I'll just run through this again if you uh, have more than one pot, just put on a spinner like that. A couple of knots here. I normally double knot it so they can't come over. That oil, I always just tape, put a bit of insulation tape on there. It'll go hard. It just protects the rope, makes things last a bit longer. And that'll be your first pot. Then one line goes to another pot, and the other one goes to your surface float. And then obviously the end pot, you don't need a pot spinner as such. You can tie it direct normally. It's just if this pot starts to move whatever it doesn't twist all your ropes up so I'm just getting my chain ready this is for the inside mooring now it's going a little bit rusty but I was um, gonna put this on last year but I didn't get round to it so I didn't really use the inside that much and I've got a mooring rope on the old one going in and out of the chain, the old chain, so it's still fine. Chains can get pretty thin before they break. Plus they're a lot easier to cut off if, <laughs> if they're thinner. Um, yeah, so this is going to be going on this year. This should be good for, it's not the biggest chain in the world, but it's probably good for, the last one lasted, I think it's about five years, six years of this size, so yeah, it would be good. But I've got to get down there in the next few days uh, when the tide's low. Get this out. Like I said, this will be on the inside. I did this on the outside two years ago on the outside morning, so I know that one should be fine. Because I originally bought a chain, was going to put it on the inside, never used it, put it on the outside, then bought another chain. 
last year to go on the inside and again didn't change it because I decided it was still strong enough so there you go and I'm glad I did because I'd have to go out and get all this stuff now with all what's going on right so we're ready with the um, with the chain to go down um, there is actually a video of when I put the the chain on the outer mooring where I dived and fitted it on uh, I'll leave a link in the description some people might like seeing that some might not sorry I'm talking about the rules and rigs and they've just come on the radio for the latest update because they've talking about what they're going to do next so we'll find out I'll let you know in a minute They're continuing the lockdown. That was to be expected. Um, obviously, it's not going to be over that quick. But if some of these people that still keep going out and don't abide by the, the lockdown rules, we're going to be stuck with this for months. So, yeah, the sooner we get sit on our asses and do nothing, you know, if there's no host, then the virus can't spread. So that's the way people got to look at it. Anyway. I've got to get back to this in the hope of getting down at some point. Um, yeah. Stay safe out there.
And there's our lobsters. Gonna be taken in. That one there's actually got a damaged claw, so I'm going to keep that one. So I'll set that one. Yeah. 